So welcome, congratulations, Air Force guys, welcome. <laughs> While I get this slide, okay, it's, it's started. Repeat after me, so I need to hear it from the men. So boys, you guys don't worry about it, but the men. So if you're a man, speak up. Fight the good fight. Fight the good fight. Finish the race. Finish the race. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. That's it. You don't say anymore. You're good. Leading others home. So this sign, going home. Going home. So this coming May, I'm going to deploy for my final deployment, hopefully, unless there, something happens in the world and I have to stay a little bit longer. And I'm going to go to Afghanistan. I'm going to lead some people, a group of people, a team with me. And we're going to get there in May, and we're going to start flying around. I fly on the C-130 Hercules out at Little Rock Air Force Base, the J model, so the new one. Really cool aircraft. can go anywhere and do anything except for hover. Can't do that. But we're going to get there, and we're going to settle in. And then we're going to start our mission. Our mission. So our mission in this particular case will be combat airlift, which means we'll be flying around with people that don't like us, around delivering people to take care of them. And maybe hopefully we'll bring everybody home and leave that place forever, but I doubt it. I doubt it. Our mission is combat airlift. That's what we do. We put things in the back of aircraft. We put people in the back of airplanes. Sometimes we don't land and they, they jump out like crazy people. Some, some of us may understand that. <laughs> but we get them to where they need to go to do what they need to do. Our mission is combat airlift. What's your mission? The title of this lesson is Lead Me Home, Leading Others Home. So what is our mission? You gotta know your mission. Because you, if you don't know your mission, what are you leading? What are you doing? What is your purpose? Matthew 28, that sound familiar? Our mission. What is our mission? Go ye into the world. First of all, who's your authority? All authority is given to me. Who's saying that? Jesus, the commander in chief. Go into all the world and teach the gospel to every living creature, baptizing them in the name the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even until the ends of the earth. So we have our mission. We have our mission. Easier said than done, right? Our mission is to go teach, baptize and teach. And if we don't know what our mission is, we can't move forward and lead. So leadership is the art of influencing others to accomplish the mission, your job, every one of you in here, all you young men, is to lead. Your job is to lead. Your job is not to hide behind your girlfriends as they sing loud. Your job is to sing loud so they know how to do it because you're the leader. And in the church today, we need leaders, not followers, not people who are worried about what the other person next to me is thinking, but we need leaders to lead. There's a scripture, and I'm going to be in this chapter or this book anyway, uh, 2 Timothy, if you want to go ahead and turn there. 2 Timothy 4. Paul, in prison, is talking to a young man, Timothy, giving his last words, his final epistle before he's probably going to be killed in Rome. I've already been poured out as a drink offering, and my time of departure has come. I fought the good fight. You said that before, right? I finished the race. I have kept the faith. This is Paul, Timothy's mentor. He considers Timothy a son in the faith to him. He's sending this letter, the last letter he writes to this young man. So I'm your Paul today, and you're my Timothy. All of you are my Timothy. These old people in this room will die and you're going to be in charge. You, you are going to be in charge. Our time has come. Generations change. And y'all are going to be leading the church. So you are going to have to fight. You're going to have to finish. And you're going to have to keep the faith. You will have to fight. You got to know what you're fighting for, right? What are you fighting for? 
You're fighting for your salvation and hopefully for that of your families as well. It's that important. It's something worth fighting for. We talk about fighting for our country, things we have to do, we sign up for them, we volunteer for those things. Pales in comparison to the job you have to do as Christian young men for your families. If you never get married, for your peers, for your friends, you have a responsibility to fight. Fight the good fight. Finish the race. Finish the race. Turn to Hebrews 11. I like people to read out loud. I guess I can't do that because I've got the microphone, so I'll, I'll read out loud. How about that? We want everyone to hear. Hebrews 12, I'm sorry. The Hebrew writer has just talked about this awesome cloud of witnesses. Verse 1. I like the pages turning. I can't hear the fingers flipping, so I, I like the pages turning. I know you're, I hear them stopping, I'll read. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. I've read that many times. And it was reminded of me again today when somebody talked about what joy means. Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, finished the race. He endured the cross. Was the cross the joy set before Jesus? No, it was not. Absolutely not the joy set before Jesus. But him seated at the right hand of God now is the joy set before Jesus. Your race is not over. The joy set before you, going home and leading others there. And as men and as leaders in our family, as leaders in our community, as our friends, it's not just about us anymore. How many people, I want to see your hands, are Christians? Raise your hands. It's not just about you anymore. You have a mission, remember? You have a mission. Go, teach, baptize, teach. It doesn't even stop after the baptism. You got teaching to do after that to grow and get that meat instead of the milk. We have a responsibility. As much as serving this country has been an honor, this is the most important job we will have as men. So I want to read over some instructions because we, we kind of alluded to in the beginning, in this last words of Paul to Timothy. So let's just go to 2 Timothy. Go ahead and turn there. Here's a young preacher who Paul has taken by his side, has mentored him, taught him, shaved his head, circumcised him, just to make sure he was, there wasn't a distraction with Timothy. He wanted to teach him. He mentored him that, that much. He loved him so much. Timothy's background may have not been the perfect Jewish background. You know, his dad was a Gentile. But he sure had some people teaching him. So 2 Timothy, we'll start there. To accomplish your mission, you must follow instructions. You must follow instructions. Hint, they're all in here. Right here. The instruction manual is right in front of you. And Paul kind of talks to Timothy through some of these things. And we'll just go through 2 Timothy because it's rich with information that you can take today and incorporate into your leadership so that you can do this for your family. Lead them home. Lead your friends home. For this reason, I remind you, I'm in uh, 1, 2 Timothy 1, 6. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on the pants. Timothy had a gift. He had a gift that was given to him by God. You have a gift that was given to you by God as well. Don't neglect that gift. Use it to the glory of God. As he continues to talk to the young man, he talks about some of his sufferings, 
He also talks to him about remembering what you've learned. Then, you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Jesus Christ, that what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful people who will be able to teach others also. That's two, one, and two. So what you have heard from me, that's key, right? What you have heard from me. Can you say that as a leader? Can you tell people to imitate you like you imitate Christ? Can you say, make that statement to your friends? Be like me. Is it really prideful to say be like me if the next sentence out of your mouth is be like me while I follow Christ? Because that's what I'm trying to do. So guard was entrusted. Follow the pattern. I'm jumping around a little bit, but follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. There's a pattern. There is truth just like Brother said earlier there's absolute truth it's in this book there is a pattern there's a reason we do things the way we do it it is written it's your responsibility to know to study to ask the questions by the way like i said you know a lot of us old folk in the room i'm not too old but old enough to be getting down that road um, have some information to pass but you know another thing that paul tells timothy is don't let anyone look down on you because you're young we may not have it right, but I'm pretty sure we do, <laughs> uh, based on using this as a guideline. But here's your chance to ask those questions. It's important to ask questions. The trend of pictures, I hope you are picking up on, is every capacity in life you lead. You lead as a friend, you lead as a youth minister, you lead as a family member, you lead in the military. There's nothing, you can't walk away from this. The building doesn't limit your ability to lead. Leaving this building on a Sunday morning or Wednesday, you lead everywhere. So if the pattern you haven't caught, that's why the pictures are streaming in the background. You lead everywhere. You're responsible. You're being watched. People look up to you. You have a responsibility for people's souls. You have a responsibility for people's lives. You lead everywhere in whatever capacity. There's some young people in these pictures. They're leaders. You're a leader. You're a leader. You lead left, right, up, and down. You'll say something to your parents, and they won't tell you, like, yeah, they're right. They'll go over and go, they're right. Man, i got to fix that. Good call. Follow instructions. Do your best. 2 Timothy 2.15. The, oh, the King James Version says, Study the shoe thyself approved. <laughs> the shoe thyself. Be diligent to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. goes back to this. Do your best to know what the instructions say. To present yourself approved. The words that come out of your mouth, you're responsible for. The teaching that you give, you're responsible for. Do your best to present yourself approved. Be a good soldier. So, you cannot lead if you don't know how to follow. And here's the deal. Raise your hands again if you're a Christian. Okay. You can put them down, just quick. Before you decide to lead, make sure you decide to follow the one person you're supposed to be following, Christ. Or you're just taking a long walk, as John Maxwell would say. You look behind you, if you think you're leading and you're not following first, you need to follow Christ. You need to repent of your sins. You need to hear that word. Believe. You heard the five, right? We hear, believe, repent, confess, be baptized. Those are not just checklists. You need to confess him before the Father. Acknowledge who is the boss and then get to work. Get to work. Confess, right? Repent, hear, believe. Baptism. So before you decide to try to lead, make sure you're following the right person. Make sure you're following the right person. That starts in the watery grave of baptism, when you rise a new creation. That's where it starts. It's not a feeling, it's action. And as you'll see, with everything we'll talk about, it requires action from you. Action, not just talking about it, not saying, 
I love Jesus. Not saying the right words in front of all your youth members and then going to school and saying other things. I can say these things because I have done these things as a young guy. I was a young Christian. I made the wrong steps. Always reminded by my mother. Colossians 3.1 is branded in my brain. And my mother would use that scripture. Boy, you better set your mind on things above. I heard that more. Sadly, I should have known she was quoting scripture. But as I studied further, grew in the word, and I was like, wow, mom's been hitting me with scriptures this whole time. Study. Do your best. So the enemy. Turn, uh, go to chapter 3. Because you're, you're a warfare. This is a battle. And you're leading your family and your friends through this. Here's some things that are going to happen. That Timothy wanted, or Paul wanted Timothy to know. And just think about, I won't say that this is Paul on his deathbed, but it's pretty close. It's the last letter he's sending. The last words he's thinking to send to this young man to make sure that he understands what's going on around him. Be aware of your surroundings. Situational awareness is what we call it in the military. Essay. You either have high essay or low essay. If you think this world is your friend, low essay, low. <laughs> Here's the kind of things that are happening in the world. But understand this. That in the last days, there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. What does your scripture say after that? The next sentence. Have nothing. <laughs> Have nothing to do with such people. Keep yourself pure. And I will tell you, that is easier said than done. There is so much in front of you as adults, let alone as young people, to distract you from doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is leading others home. Because you're Christians, most of you, so you're already good to go, right? Got mine. That's not how it works. That's not your mission. That's not the job we have set before us. Avoid such people, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women burdened with sins, led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth, Talks about Janus and Jambres from uh, Moses as they oppose him. So these men also oppose the truth. Does that sound familiar? These men oppose the truth. Men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. But they will not get very far for their folly will be plain to all as to that of, two, of those two men. They oppose the truth. Have I known anyone today, people today who oppose the truth? So this is Paul talking to Timothy. A few, few years back, right? A couple years back. How much worse is it today? But is there anything new here? Are there people still out there who oppose the truth? Are there people out there who think they are God? There are some crazy people out there right now who, without this, without this guide, without this authority, they can do anything they want. I mean, it seems like we're trying to do anything we want, just based on the lessons earlier. But it also keeps you on track. He continues with, with Timothy here. What's going to keep you on track? What's going to keep you on the path to lead your friends? What's going to keep you doing the right things? Like I said, this dialogue here, I will tell you, I'm jumping around. Go back and read this, both First and Second Timothy. This is the last one, but read First Timothy. Read Titus while you're at it. See the direction that Paul gives to these young men as they're setting on their ways. And I will tell you, you know, it's promising to see a young person like Timothy who's able to be left behind to handle a church, to, to establish elderships, and to lead a church the way they're supposed to go. Also very encouraging that this young man, Timothy, uh, was in tune enough to give Paul reports of other churches and how they're doing. And he's the one that brought the message to them about the church in Thessaloniki. You know, that was Timothy bringing that message to tell him how they were doing. Um, you know, he 
did it the right way. He latched on, or Paul picked him up and brought him along, and then left him in places for growth. Are you challenging yourself? So it's pretty simple to kind of sit back and let someone else guide you, but what are you doing to challenge your leadership? We call it professional development in the Air Force, and there's classes and college and bears oh my that they say you need to do this stuff to professionally develop yourself. So what are we doing to professionally develop ourselves? I'll tell you one thing you're doing, sitting right here in this crowd, listening to some awesome speakers this week, give you some great words of wisdom that you need to live by, acknowledge, think through, ruminate. That's a big old word that means the thing the cows do with their food. Chew on it. Chew on it a little bit. Study it, but put those words into action. That's how you're going to lead others home. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, reboot, rebuke, exhort, and complete, or with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. Do you wonder why Paul had to say this numerous times to Timothy? I mean, in all these different verses, he's talking about people who are not going to endure sound doctrine, who think they're smarter than God. There's a reason for that. You know, those things that you want to be remembered, you do what? You repeat, right? The memory verses, you know, you gotta remember that stuff? You repeat them. So he's telling them here, they will not endure sound teaching. I'm in uh, chapter 4, verse 3 now. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. Ministry, service, leading people home, endure suffering. Who thought that was a good idea? Do, you, do we think that we're not going to suffer? What did Jesus say about that? If you follow me, you're going to suffer. The servant's not greater than their master. If they hate you or hate me, they're going to hate you. But that's okay. What is at stake? What's at stake if you don't do your job? What's at stake if I don't do my job? What's at stake if the youth ministers don't do their job? What's at stake if you don't teach other people? What's at stake? What are we facing? There's a lot of good people in the world, but Jesus says, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but those that do the will of my Father, right? It's not enough to be just a good person. It's enough to be leading your people in the path of righteousness as God has set before us in his word. Hold the pattern, preach the word. There are those that will not endure. Your job is to press forward and lead. Turn to Matthew. Get to my chapter 13. Uh, sorry, yep, yeah, Matthew 7. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? Then will I declare to him, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness." Interesting. But I thought I was doing right. I thought I let my friends down the right path. I really never thought I had time to mention Jesus to them. You know, I was a I'm a different person at school. I just want to be cool, I want to fit in, I want to say the right things. Hmm. Does that line up with fight, the good fight? finish the race, and keep the faith? If you get nothing else from this lesson, fight the good fight, finish the race, keep the faith. Remember what joy was set before Jesus. 
for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Read the account of the cross. Read Isaiah, the suffering servant, of what he endured for us. But for the joy that was set before him, he endured. Life is not easy. 100% not. It is not easy. It is hard. As you move along and you have responsibilities and you have all kinds of other crazy things, kids to feed, like my sons, that's like a whole nother paycheck goes to their food. It's not easy. For the joy that was set before Jesus, though, he endured the cross. And here's another one for you. For the joy set before Jesus, he endured the cross. He's sitting at the right hand of God now. Before we were even thought of, God had a plan for us. He knew we were going to mess up because he's God. And he provided a plan for us. It was his son to go to that cross to die for our sins, innocent. So now put yourselves in the place of a father who has a son. I've got three. Would you send your son to the cross for me? Your innocent son? That's a price that was paid for your sins. That's the message you need to share with your friends. That's how you lead your family. That is the focus. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Not what sport you play, not what position you are, what rank you are in the military, how many medals. I've got a lot of them. There are, they cost a lot more money as you go along. So they're like, you get them without asking for them, by the way. <laughs> they just, you do something, you get a medal. Uh, at least in the Air Force. Maybe it's different in other services, but we seem to just breathe and get medals these days. Not important. Not important at all. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet loses his soul? What will you give in exchange for your soul? What will you give in exchange for somebody else's soul? Are you willing to face the music on that one? We are responsible, men. We are responsible for that leadership. We are responsible to lead our families home.